Hello and welcome to another edition of National Focus. I'm Pearl Fontaine. Topping the headlines, Louis Revere of the Concord Primary School tops the 2013 Grade 6 National Assessment Examination. Strategic plan for medical laboratories being developed and government to improve literacy on the island, one teacher at a time. Stay with us for details of the headline stories and others right after the break. The facts as they are brought to you every day, every day, every day. only on GIS Channel 7. Welcome back. Louis Revere of the Concord Primary School is the top performer in the 2013 Grade 6 National Assessment Examination. Education officials announced the results during a press conference on Monday. Other top performers included Cody Jean-Jacques of the Convent Prep, Gianni George of the St. Martin Primary School, Kayla Ann Geest also of the St. Martin Primary School, Michaela Bedno of the Salisbury Primary, and Shally Ann Shaw of the St. Martin's Primary School. GIS News caught up with some of the excited students of the St. Martin Primary School on Monday. Gianni George spoke briefly about her initial reaction to the news of her accomplishment. I can't believe it. Her performance came as no surprise to her parents. Well, I'm very proud of her. She has always been a hard worker, a high achiever from day one. She has always been at school academically inclined, always anxious about her work. And that's one thing, she will forget everything else except her schoolwork. And so, so I think it paid off. For Kayla Ann Geist, her achievement at the exams is significant after missing two weeks of classes due to ill health. I feel happy and excited. I feel surprised. Shalian Shaw attributed her success to the combined efforts of teachers and her parents. I'm very happy because I um, worked very hard and it's all paid off. My parents stayed up with me nights helping me study. My teacher, when I couldn't understand things, she helped me and everything. She made things more understandable for me. Her father, Dale Shaw, is proud of Shalian's achievement. The hard work has paid off, you know? Being at her all the time to study, sleepless nights, you know. It's like the parents are going back to school actually, you know, doing all the research and, you know. Grade 6 teacher Miss Bonnie told reporters Monday that her class obtained 22 scholarships, 10 bursaries and 2 passes. She says the success is a result of hard work by students and committed teachers. When I come into the classroom, Everything else takes second place and my children, they take first place in everything. I dedicate everything that I have to them. And also it's not just me, it's St. Martin Primary School. It's the dedication of the teachers and the drive and most importantly the principle that, that we have behind us. She's a go-get-it person. We also sought the reaction of principal of the St. Martin Primary School, Brinette Morrow. It says that St. Martin Primary School has a system that is working for it because over the years we have looked at what the ministry has asked us to do. For example, two years ago the ministry asked us to have exams at the end of each term. It cost the school a lot, but we did it. And because of that, we were able to see our students' results very early. They have also done, the Ministry of Education has also introduced the curriculum-based measurement assessments that they do with the grade K and the grade 1. We look at those, so the teachers from grade K begin to work with the children. And so when they, they are ready for common entrance, it's a continuation. The grade 6 teachers, all four of them work very hard. Okay, but the success of today is a school success of every teacher who has taught at the school. Cody Jean-Jacques of the Convent Prep explained that preparing for the exam was tough, but he was not surprised by the results. It was 
hard, very. All months of extra lessons, tons of homework. I couldn't play as much, couldn't watch as much TV. Yeah. I feel great. In fact, all my hard work it finally paid off. His teacher Elton Etienne also spoke with reporters on Monday. I'm ecstatic. Uh, I was not surprised because he's been a hard worker. He's been very consistent in his work. Meantime, the Roseau Primary School was declared the most improved school at this year's Grade 6 National Assessment Examination. Nicholas Goldberg of the Measurement and Evaluation Unit of the Ministry of Education explained that the school recorded a 68.1% improvement. The Roseau Primary, in fact, was doing very poorly in 2010, 2011, 2012. But this year, they improved dramatically. And that is all credit to the principal and staff of the institution. And the improvement, as Dr. Blaise noted, was something like 68. And that's a huge improvement. You're moving from a school which is performance has been very weak, well below 400, to a school which is getting a performance well over 400, which is showing you you're in really performing very, very well indeed. And it's all the more creditable because you're not talking about two or three students, you're talking about 20 students. So it's a quite a large number of children. Other schools showing significant improvement were the Warner, Dalis, Grand Bay and Dodan Primary Schools. At the Roseau Primary School, Principal Greta Roberts is proud of the achievements of both students and teachers. And it has been a rough time for us, considering the socio-economic conditions or the situation of the children. But what we have proven today, and I will say it again, what we have proven today is that regardless as to where children come from, they just need that extra push, that guidance, and they will get there. But then this is something I'm going to use to motivate the teachers even more, to let them see that we can indeed shine above all. Chelsea Panthea, Blessing John Baptist and Ruth Ann Benjamin all obtained scholarships at this year's exams. I feel like I actually did something for my school and made a name and I feel proud of myself. Okay. I feel happy, excited to know that I can make my school feel happy and also my parents. Okay. They, always, they were always there telling us what we should do and critiquing our work and telling us the right things and sometimes we got angry but it was for the best. I felt proud and happy. Carla Lawrence and Tina Toussaint from the Silver Lake community both obtained bursaries. The school that I wanted to go my mother wouldn't have the money to afford but I had to work hard so that I can do it so that my future can be better than, so that my future can be better than the people in my community, so that I could be a better person. My teachers and principal also helped with mostly everything, and if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be able to get what I get today. Tina's mother says her daughter's performance speaks volumes about her future. I would like her to take it from there to go high school and get a better education and Whatever she wants to do in life, she'll have to continue doing it. GIS News congratulates all the students who have excelled at the 2013 Grade 6 National Assessment. The Ministry of Health is in the process of developing a five-year strategic plan for medical laboratories in Dominica. On Monday, representatives from government and private sector labs, clinical heads of hospitals, as well as legal and policy experts, began a week-long workshop at the Garraway Hotel. Stakeholders will discuss and provide information which will constitute Dominica's strategic plan for medical laboratories. Lab and Superintendent Katharina Jemmert during Monday's opening ceremony said, labs in the region are struggling for resources, and it's critical that strategic plans are developed to better prioritize these resources. Jemmott noted that the strategic plan being developed will seek to strengthen and achieve adequate laboratory capacity. It is really important for us to go through with this process, especially at this time in um, the history of labs in the region and really internationally. Labs are at the crossroad. We are really struggling 
to keep up, really struggling for resources. And what more um, timely manner is it to have a strategic plan in place? When you don't have money, that is when you really need to plan. And so if we've been going on without a plan, we really need a plan now. According to Helen Royer, the permanent secretary in the Ministry of Health, the strategic plan, when developed, will provide a roadmap for improving and strengthening the provision and delivery of laboratory services on the island. The objective of this workshop, therefore, seeks to improve, strengthen, and promote the capacities and capabilities of medical laboratories that will improve their diagnostic and monitoring efficiencies. Since the Ministry of Health is of the firm belief that the involvement of the private sector in health, in health development should be stimulated and encouraged, it is envisaged that there will be increased public-private sector partnership and collaboration in the provision of quality lab services. Dr. Michael Sipasod and Ms. Sanji Beckles will facilitate this week's workshop. Evaluation results of the 59 individuals who officially joined the public service last Friday indicate that new entrants are adequately trained and prepared to take on assigned tasks in the service. The course was executed by placing participants into two groups. They were trained in areas of ICT in the workplace, performance management, secretarial functions, registration and filing, public relations and numerous other subjects. Group 1, comprising 30 persons, was gender balanced. The group reported a 94% completion rate, while Group 2, comprising 10 males and 19 females, reported 91% completion. Joyce Lynn Irish, Administrative Officer, reported on the assessment of the new entrants during the course's closing ceremony. She described the evaluation process and the scores attained by Group 1. The evaluation of the course was not only done through an end of workshop questionnaire, but also through the administration of examinations at the end of each module. A total of six examinations were administered to group one, the overall average score being 78%. Comparably, seven examinations were administered to group two, with an overall average score of 73% being attained. Overall, the performance was good, though there was some disparity in individual performance and performance in various subject areas. The average scores in each group subject area for group one were as follows. Introduction to the public service, 77%. Enhanced productivity, communication skills, and customer service, 77%. Finance rules and regulations, 74%. Vote keeping, accounting procedures, 76%. Secretarial functions, 89%. Registration and filing, 78%. Irish reported that Group 2 also performed well during assessment exercises. Introduction to the public service, 72%. Enhanced productivity, communication skills, and customer service, 78%. Finance rules and regulations, 72%. Vote keeping accounting procedures, 67%. Employee pay element forms, 57%. Secretarial functions, 89%. And registration and filing, 79%. Records also indicate that a significant number of individuals were able to achieve remarkable grades in their courses. Mention must be made of the following officers in Group 1 who achieved scores of 100%, namely Michelle Bell, Michael Burton, Everett Fabian, Melissa Roll, and Tahana Sawley, all in the area of secretarial functions. In Group 2, Daryl Angle, Ishma Brown, Kyle James, and Delphine Sandville all attained scores of 100% in the area of secretarial functions. 13 persons from Group 1 realized an overall score of 80% and above, the highest average score of 92% being attained by Ms. Melissa Roll, immediately followed by Melissa Charles with a score of 88%. With respect to Group 2, 8 persons received an overall score 
of, of above 80%, while the highest average score of 88% was achieved by Ms. Rachel Coppel, followed by Ms. Delvin Senville and Ms. Gemma Julian, each with an average score of 87%. Chief Personnel Officer Irma Edwards remarked that the public sector anticipates the fresh ideas and productivity that the new entrants will bring. We look forward, the permanent secretaries and other senior public officers, look forward to the quality of the service that you will provide. We look forward to the positive attitudes, the positive work ethics that you will exhibit during the the provision of your service. We look forward to the extra effort and commitment that you will make to ensure that you achieve all your targets, that the departments within which you serve achieve all their objectives, and at the end of the day, we will be able to, to say with pride and with joy that we have allowed the public service to be as productive as it can be. Officials have said that recommendations made during the course will be taken into consideration for the next course. English teacher at the Roseau Primary School, Cyrilla Ansem, is eager to revolutionize the way literacy is promoted in schools on the island. Ansem is among numerous educators who, through government assistance, earn degrees from the University of the West Indies. Ansem earned her degree in literacy and has since returned to the work of educating the nation's youth. One aspect of English about which Ansem is passionate is writing, specifically teaching students how to write. Ms. Ansem feels strongly that many teachers are not properly approaching the subject of writing. Long ago, um, we had what we call the products, where the teacher would give you a topic, and the famous one was how I spent my holidays. Every student dreaded coming back to school in September because as soon as you reach, the teacher would write on the board, how I spent my holidays, sit at a seat and cross her legs, and then she gives you 45 minutes, and you're supposed to write, and then at the end of the 45 minutes, she picks up your paper and she grades it. A lot of red lines all over it, and there's a grade next to it. But the funny thing about it is, she hasn't taught you how to write. She assessed you on writing, but you were not taught. In an effort to improve student literacy, the Ministry of Education has been using resources like Ms. Ansem to share knowledge with other educators. According to Ansem, she has been sharing with teachers the writing process, which has dramatically improved her students' comprehension and writing skills. They begin with the pre-writing, the pre-writing where you give the students time to explore their ideas. They explore the ideas, they put it down. Now there are different styles. They can have um, webbing, clustering, research, you have, you have the questions and answers, different styles. They do the, the pre-writing. When they're finished with the pre-writing, then there's what we call the first draft. The student is given an opportunity to write a first draft. We free abandon, no thought of spelling, punctuation, whatever. You just write. Let your thoughts tumble down onto the paper. After the first draft, the student and the teacher, the liaise. The teacher gives the student feedback. The, the student has the opportunity to look at what she has written and figure out, is that what I really want to say? Can I enhance it? Is there something I want to delete? Do I want to put in something else? And this is called the revising stage. At this point, says Ms. Ansem, students share their work with peers and are critiqued. Necessary changes are then made by the students based on feedback from their fellow students, after which the writers reach the editing stage in the process. The editing stage is where the teacher used to do. The teacher was the one who used to do the editing. You'd write your composition and your teacher would do all the editing and then grade you. But in the writing process, the students get to edit. So you get to check to see whether you're having your full stops, all your punctuation marks, your grammar is intact. You check to see whether your handwriting is presentable enough. You do all your editing. When you're finished with that, then you can still confer with your teacher. Find out whether this is what you really want to give up. And then you have a chance to write your final draft where you publish your work. Your work can be published in author's chair where you sit in your class and read to your students. It can be done in front of the assembly to the whole school. You can put it online. You can take it home to read to your parents. 
and it is so much more involved and interactive than just you sitting by yourself being thrown a topic and you are just writing on it out of the clear blue so the writing process is much more exciting and when the students are, are involved in the writing process it makes them vivid writers active writers and you get a whole lot of different styles writing styles Ansem says this move by government aimed at developing better students is a commendable one. And I must commend the EOs, our education officers, like Ms. Fern Brumant and Ms. Mag Mrs. Margaret Jules, because they saw the potential and they saw the need to use a colleague in the classroom to assist others. You know, and, that, and came across very well. I applaud the government. I applaud them because they are putting their, they are putting their money where their mouth is. Yeah, because when you empower the teachers, you empower the students. You have good teachers in the classroom, as we can see at Rosa Primary. You have good teachers in the classroom. The, the students get something good and they're able to be taught well. The idea which came out that the, the teachers need to be educated the teachers need to be given that chance because some of us would not be able to do it on our own but the chance was made available to us and quite a bit of us you know we took that we took up the challenge and we are the better off for it so far teachers of the southwest and Roseau valley have already benefited from government facilitated workshops with miss ann sam she says it is smart of government to use educators like herself to reach their professional peers. Based on this template, Ansem says she has gotten positive feedback from other teachers, which means good things for student literacy on the island. And that's the English segment of the news. Let's now join MacPhus in St. Louis for the Crayol Highlights. Hello, tout le monde. Bienvenue à ce nouvel en Crayol. Non, moi, c'est MacPhus in St. Louis. Premièrement, le ministère de l'Éducation fait annoncement aux résultats examination de l'examen de l'Éducation de l'Éducation. Il y a 1 million avec 42 étudiants, 500 avec 95 garçons et 500 avec 47 filles et qui ont l'examen de l'Éducation. 88 étudiants qui ont reçu une scholarship pendant 100 avec 16 qui ont été appelés besoins. Le ministère de l'Éducation, honorable Peter Saint-Jean, a complimenté tous ces étudiants qui font bon en examen de l'Éducation. Premièrement, moi, je voulais um, complimenter tous ces étudiants-là et aussi ces teachers, l'école avec parents, la communauté qui travaillent avec les enfants nous pour, pour, pour nous aujourd'hui, que ces enfants ont fait bien. En ça, nous avons créé Grade 6 National Assessment. Aussi, moi, je voulais complimenter ces l'école-là qui travaille et fait vraiment bien. Et aussi, l'année ça là, nous voyons qui des premiers places là, c'est des jeunes hommes qui, tout, qui trouvaient ces places là. Ils m'ont voulu complimenter pour tout travail là, ils ont fait. Mais nous allons continuer à voir um, un Grade 6 National Assessment là, qui c'est Tifia qui travaille autant meilleur parce que ces jeunes garçons là. Et ça, c'est un problème qui, vraiment, nous, en ministre de l'Éducation, a présenté un petit problème pour nous. Puisque nous, il y a des nous qui nous n'y pour mettre mise en place pour adresser ces problèmes-là qui ont affecté ces jeunes hommes-là. Euh, Tiboye. Puisque Tiboye en doit travailler même quand c'est Tifia. Et le ministre qui a mis mise en place pour adresser ces problèmes là tout de suite. Aussi, je voulais com com complémenter à dans l'école, yon de l'école qui fait qui travaille très red avec wellman ou wè qui um, yon pas de ka fait bien en temps passé mais en l'année ça là qui um, ces élèves là ces étudiants yon wellman travaille et c'est l'école ça yon yon wellman um, sorti hors en bas et augmenté um, manière yon ka travaille résultat là c'est Louis Rivière hors de l'école Concorde sorti premier Cody Saint Jean hors l'école Convent Prep et puis Jean George Saint Martin Primary deuxième position, Kalian Gist uh, Saint Martin Primary et puis Michael Bedno hors à Bawi a uh, tapé en cinquième position. L'école Primary Wozo tapé position contre l'école là qui avançait plus meilleur en Dominique. 
Alors, nouvelle projet CARICOM Trade and Competitiveness qui est lancé en Dominique Madi Simen Salam. Projet Salam est trois phases qui a adressé bagay CARICOM Single Market and Economy. On délégation de CARICOM et puis OECS. Ensemble, et puis consultant en Dominique à présent, quand une discussion à ce projet Salam. Projet Salam, c'est là on communique qui est sorti, qui est bénéficié Dominique qui a consigné CARICOM Single Market and Economy. Projet Salla qui a tapé si pour financer le SIDA et puis secrétariat à CARICOM. En la nouvelle, le gouvernement Dominique prend décision pour mettre et tourner en la plaine à aller à l'école secondaire Casse Bruce. Parole Salla sorti au ministère de l'Éducation, Honorable Peter Saint-Jean. L'année Salla, nous avons un grand changement en Grade 6 National Assessment. Et ça, nous pour faire avec les enfants qui ont la plaine délices qui attendaient l'école dans les salles. En temps passé, tous les enfants en haut la plaine, nous avons évolué à l'école en roseau. Nous avons créé ça roseau catchment. Mais dans les salles, nous prenons le ministre de l'éducation en consultation avec ses parents-là en la plaine et délices. Nous prenons une décision pour voyer tous les enfants la plaine en l'école secondaire Cassibrous. Ça veut dire que les parents, qui les enfants qui passent l'examen là, qui mettent les enfants, qui voient les enfants à l'école Cassie Bruce. Et en un délice, ils ont un choix. Soit ils ont voué à Cassie Bruce ou si ils ont voué à en, en Ouzo. Et nous avons fait ça, puisque nous avons fait ça meilleur pour ces enfants-là. Et puis finalement, le ministre Santé en chemin pour développer un plan 5 l'année pour l'AB médecin en Dominique. Officier de l'AB gouvernement et ça a privé. Mon chef de l'hôpital en parmi d'autres commencé un workshop qui a dit il y a une semaine qui a mis en place pour les bagages de salon. Le workshop de la a mis en place en hôtel Garaway en Wozo. C'est officiel qui a mis en information qui a servi comme guide pour l'AB en Dominique. En même temps aussi, pour mon secrétaire de la ministre Santé Helen Roye, fait parole qui a mis en place pour les bagages de salon et qui a mis en service de l'AB en pays Dominique. Merci mesdames, ça c'est tout pour nous faire un croyant pour à présent. Non moins, c'est Mac Fusson Saint Louis. Au revoir. Coming up in the tip of the day, find out which vitamin can help you maximize your bone health. Scary! Everything just shaking and shaking and making big creaky noises. Earthquakes, big and small, take place in the Caribbean at least 10 times a year. The dishes rattling and falling and breaking, then Vonna started to scream. All I could think to do was shout, get outside, get out! Earthquakes, hazards, take control, reduce your loss. If an earthquake hits, what can you do? Get down, get under an item of furniture like a table, hold on and stay there until the quake passes. Find out lots more about earthquakes and other hazards at your local disaster office. A message from your national disaster office and Sidera. So I'm all about eating healthy and staying healthy. Vitamin K, which I'm sure you've heard of, is known for its role in maintaining a healthy blood coagulation system. But it also plays an important role in bone metabolism. It works by regulating osteoclasts, which are the cells that increase bone turnover to prevent bone demineralization. Vitamin K also helps in the production of the bone protein, which is vital for the uptake of calcium and for maintaining bone mineral density. With all that information, here's what you need to know. The foods with the richest source of vitamin K are leafy green vegetables such as kale, spinach, collard greens, Swiss chard, and broccoli. Also rich in vitamin K are tomatoes, carrots, strawberries, and bell peppers. And that's all for this edition of National Focus. We always welcome your suggestions and comments. Drop us an email at gis at dominica.gov.dm or visit our website at news.gov.dm. Friend us on our Facebook page and be sure to like our GIS Dominica fan page. You can also catch up on past national focus newscasts on our GIS Dominica YouTube channel. On behalf of the entire news production team, I'm Pearl Fontaine. Thanks for watching.
Thank you.